this thing on? Oh, excellent. So this is an honor. Here you go. And you want to read, read the text too? It's right here. <laughs> May the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. Thank you, Carolyn. Good morning. Good morning. You're getting good at that. <laughs> I hope that you are all enjoying this sunny Sunday morning here on the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. I welcome you this morning to worship at St. Peter's with St. Peter's in the name of God. Je vous souhaite toutes et tous la bienvenue au nom de Dieu. We are all truly welcome here. As we prepare for our worship this morning, a few notes. This morning we will be sharing in spiritual communion. Spiritual communion is that which lifts up the symbolic gesture in our practice of one of our two sacraments. We will not be physically partaking in the elements, but we will be lifting up the spiritual connection that this sacrament expresses. A sacrament is the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. In the case of our two sacraments, they are practices that were modeled by Jesus. In them, we too seek to connect with God and one another. These symbols are an action that expresses a deep connection with God and the inspiration that we find in faith to act with love care and community. So we'll be doing that today. During the service, all are encouraged and welcome to mask, especially while we're singing. And uh, other than that, um, most of us will be keeping our masks on, but if we're seated and distanced and you really need to for respiration issues, uh, you can take off your mask. But while you're singing, you're encouraged to wear the mask very much, please. Let us join in our territorial acknowledgement. 
We acknowledge that the lands our churches and many of our homes sit on have been stewarded by the first peoples of Turtle Island. Among them, the traditional territory of the Atikmishing Anishinaabe peoples. We commit ourselves as a faith community to the multi-generational work of reconciliation, the pursuit of true justice and flourishing well-being for all peoples who now call Canada home. This afternoon, as we move into the life and work of the people, we will, we will be coming together in another service, a covenanting service. We are all of us already in covenant with God. So today, with a smudge outside at 2.30 and a service inside at 3 p.m., we, St. Peter's United Church, myself as minister and the Canadian Shield Regional Council will celebrate our commitment to live out this covenant in new ways as we celebrate that we will be traveling together on the journey of faith for as long as we are together. I lift my great thanks to all those who have already come together in planning, organizing, and inspiring this service. Too many to name, too important to forget. So thank you all. And this afternoon, come and celebrate. There's going to be cake. <laughs> Turning to other announcements, you will notice that there are a lot of orange t-shirts around today. And uh, there are both in here and outside. And so many of us have participated this week in activities to commemorate Orange T-Shirt Day to lift up our commitment to truth and reconciliation and right relations. We continue to lift up our commitment today in our services and in our life of faith together as we journey into the future. In acknowledging the pain that has been caused in the past when we have forgotten to honor and love our neighbors as ourselves and so disrespected traditions, cultures, and faith expressions of others. Pain has been caused, lingering pain that is generational. Today and throughout our lives together, we work to support healing and to live in right relationship with one another, loving God by loving all of God's children. I'd like to thank MS and fellowship committees as well as the church council for their support in lifting up and encouraging activities this week and into the future. Keeping an eye on the rest of the On the Rock, please do remember that you still have until October 20th to get perennials, I believe it was, together, to be taken and planted on the island in honor of Anne, someone who celebrated and lifted up love for all creation. A big thank you for all of you who donated flat screens to equip St. Peter's in our infrastructure for hybrid meetings and the technology that we can use to support our life of faith and the life of the community. And so thank you for that. It's going to make a big difference. If your age is grade 7 and up, today starts the youth programs in the youth room. Do uh, keep an eye on that and enjoy. You are a big and much loved part of the community here at St. Peter's. So this is your church too, so we're really glad that there's programming for you as well. I'd like to lift up, I don't know if anybody noticed, the blooming tree in the narthex here when you walked in. Last, during the week there were six leaves, now there are eight. That continues to grow, and that is, yeah. Each leaf represents $1,500 that has been put to, towards the life and work of this congregation to support our relationships and our life of faith together. So once again, something worth celebrating. Yay! Do keep that up. Keep on your, uh, your attentiveness to the announcements. You'll notice that on Eagle's Wing, there were a lot of resources that pointed us towards support of truth and reconciliation and also becoming an anti-racist church. This week on October 5th, there will be a, a panel discussion online called Building a Strong Foundation, Anti-Racist Works in Action. And so a way, one more way for us to acknowledge the ways that we can offer healing, support, and love in the world as a church, as we love God's creation and one another. 
In upcoming weeks, there will be a baptism in two weeks from today on the 16th, so one more sacrament that we will be expressing as we lift up our relationship with one another and with God. And next week's service will be a celebration of Thanksgiving, as it is Thanksgiving weekend. So all who are not out of town visiting, visiting family, do feel free to come in and uh, celebrate Thanksgiving together. And uh, if your family's visiting you, please do let them know they are welcome. Are there other announcements this morning? Hi, it's Amy, coordinator of the Spirit Quest. Um, just to let you know that throughout the month of October, at least, we're going to have outdoor and indoor. So you can choose uh, which, um, which stream you'd like to go to. So Allison's going to be out there today, for sure. Um, and the nursery is open. I see a lot of little ones here. So if you need to uh, deposit someone at some point in the service, <laughs> feel free to do so. Thank you. And they will be cared for and, and, and supervised. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, Ellen. Um, don't know. No? All right. Okay, so the reception this afternoon after the celebration of Covenant will be downstairs in Heritage Hall. Okay. And we'll have windows open and keep ventilation and things like that. Excellent. And our chair of council also has an announcement. Good thing we have not a lot going on, right? Yeah. yeah. Makes things go really quick. <laughs> uh, I'm here on behalf of Council. According to our Constitution, uh, that uh, the Council, after its first meeting in September, is to appoint a nominations committee. The nominations committee looks for Council members for the next year. Two of the members on the nomination committee are to be members of Council, and the other two members of the nominating committee are to be people who are not on Council. This does not mean you have to be on council. This means you get to ask other people to be on council. So you may want to consider this if you're interested, and we really hope that somebody's interested. Uh, please leave your name uh, with Carolyn, our office manager, uh, and you can reach her in the office Monday to Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Biz. Yes. And uh, we'll be hearing from different committees and members of council and different groups in the church as we go through our faith life. Everyone's going to get asked to represent a little bit and share the stories of the work that is done. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes here at St. Peter's and a lot of wonderful activities and wonderful people working on behalf of this whole community to support life and love in the world. So. Do, uh, do think about that nominations committee. It's, great to, it's a great way to support the work that the community can do. I invite you to join me in the spiritual focus as we continue our worship today. We gather here this communion Sunday, this World Communion Sunday, seeking to ground our lives in divine love. We gather here this morning to seek healing and reconciliation, knowing that God sustains all life on earth. We gather here this morning to praise and worship God, the Creator. There was a man, just like many of us, who had the hands of a carpenter and spoke words that moved and shook us, moves, words that move us still to actions of love, of inclusion, of equity. He spoke words that brought us into community with one another, with the divine, to express and embody love. In this moment, we light this candle as a symbol of that light that light from God, that he said he was and taught us all that we are, light in the world, at the center of our welcome and the center of our lives. And so as symbol, we light this candle.
embodied in flame, lived out in the world. St. Peter's United Church as an affirming congregation with a specific commitment to welcome members of the 2S and LGBTQAI plus community seeks to be a safe and brave place for all people to gather and participate in life and work of the community of faith. It is to be a space that is affirming and inclusive of all ages, ancestries, sexes and sexual orientations, genders and gender identities, abilities, immigration status, and lived experience. Everyone in this space acknowledges that there may be some discomfort due to discussion topics that may be uncomfortable in nature, but that we will engage them together in love and respect. In the establishment of a safe and brave space, participants honor each other's experiences and opinions with respect to achieve a place of understanding, a space free of fear, a space free of bullying and harassment of any kind, the most important part of a safe and brave space is the inclusion of all. You are all welcome here. Vous êtes toutes et tous bienvenus. I invite you to join me in our prayer honoring the four directions as we lift up this morning our commitment to truth and reconciliation and stand in solidarity with indigenous peoples. I invite you to stand as you are able and turning in each direction as they are called out. The first will be east, which is that way. And each time, it is a responsive prayer. You may not be able to see the screen, though, because you'll be looking in different directions. So when I say, um, and the people say, what we will say is, yeah, amen's a good way of saying it, but what we're going to say this time is, come Holy Creator Spirit, come. Let's practice that. And the people say, come Holy Creator Spirit, come. Excellent. And what I'll try to do is pause and put my hands out a little bit, just sort of give you that cue. All right. Let us stand as we are able. God, the creator, the strength of the people, we honor you. Listen to the thoughts of your people. We respect the truth of your spirit world and care for your creation to the east, to the south, to the west, and to the north. We honor you by deeds and not words. We live by the ways you have entrusted to us within the circle of life. Come, great spirit, as we gather in your name. We face the east. To your symbol, to your symbol, symbol color gold, the breath of the morning sun. To your animal sign, the eagle, which soars ever upward in the praise of the creator and calls us to do the same. To your words, calling us to balance our minds in the spirit of humility and truth. We invoke your spirit of illumination and far-sighted vision. The ways have, you have shown us how to love you and each other with heart, mind, and soul, we pray. And the people say, come Holy Creator Spirit, come. We turn to the south. To your symbol color red, the hue of revelation. To your animal sign, the wolf, strong and enduring. The ways call us to balance of spirit and harmony with all nations, tribes and clans. We invoke your wisdom, grace, and goodness of the ages, and we pray. And the people say, come, Holy Creator Spirit, come. We turn to the west. To your symbol color black, the stillness of night. To your sign, thunder mighty and bold. To your animal sign, the buffalo. 
The ways call us to balance emotions in the tradition of truth and honesty. We invoke your spirit ways of seeing within the community and its strength to endure, and we pray, and the people say, Come, Holy Creator Spirit, come. We turn to the north. To your symbol color white, the truth of clarity and brightness. To your animal sign, the bear, which touches us with earthiness and all things growing. To your words, calling us to balance of our body in the spirit of a good sense and humor. We invoke your spirit of innocence, trust, and love. The ways open our eyes to sacredness of each living thing, and we pray. And the people say, Come, Holy Creator Spirit, come. We turn to complete the circle. To God, the Creator, who cleanses the world with snow, wind, and rain, to the Creator's Son, Jesus the Christ, who fills us with mercy and loving embrace of all nations, and to the Holy Creator's Spirit, who guides us, and we pray, and the people say, Come, Holy Creator Spirit, come. You may turn forward once more. Creator, you bent the earth like a bow until it was one round, shining planet. At your word, the land was drawn into mountains and tundra, forests and prairies. The waters were gathered together into rivers, lakes, and seas. Many times when people crossed these seas from other lands, they broke the circle of your creation by their greed and violence, and they shattered the lives of others. Creator, renew the circle of the earth and turn the hearts of all people to one another, that they and all the earth may live and be drawn toward you through the love of Jesus Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit in the circle of the Trinity, forever one. And together we say, Amen and Amen. And you may be seated. Um, I'd like you to join me in the gathering prayer. Is it up there yet? There we go. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of this sacred circle through which all of creation is related. You show us the way to give a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength this World Communion Sunday to live together with respect and commitment in healing and reconciliation as we grow in your spirit, for you are God now and forever. Amen. So I'd like us now to turn to uh, Voices United for our first hymn on page 678. And um, we can stand for this. The title is For the Healing of the Nations. And we're going to sing, stand and sing with our masks on.
please be seated. Bruce is helping me wrangle Stevie. He's been a little bit concerned this lately about whether or not he should burrow and hibernate this year, but rabbits don't hibernate. I keep trying to remind him. But there he is trying to hide in my books. So <laughs> did you find him? Oh, good. He's been, he's, he's been fine. I think he's been a bit shy lately. He's been having, <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, hiding right now. Yeah, is he hiding? Yeah, here we go. Hi, Stevie. Does, uh, does everybody, does anyone who considers themselves young or young at heart want to come and join me up here or you want to chat from where you're seated? Either one's fine. Stevie's finally waking up, I think. He's, he, was, he was asleep in the books. There we go. He likes to read. But yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you got a puppy. You got some, you got some friends yourself there. Hello. So this is Stevie, everybody. If you haven't met Stevie, hello. <laughs> He's still waking up a bit. He's rubbing his eyes. Yeah. So how are you all this morning? Yeah. It's exciting. Is that Paw Patrol down there? Ooh, we got Paw Patrol in the house. There's celebrities here. This is great. Hi. Good morning. I'm going to take my mask off for just, just so you can see my face, too. There we go. How are you? Yeah? Welcome. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Excellent. So this morning, do you know what we're doing in church today? No? Me neither sometimes, but I, I think I figured it out today at least. We are going to celebrate something called communion, and we're going to do spiritual communion. Do you know what communion is? There's no such thing as a wrong answer. Anybody want to help us out? What's communion? It brings people together. There we go. What else does it do? There's juice and bread. There absolutely is. That's what we use generally in the United Church, juice and bread. And I think we, we touched on it just now. It brings people together through juice and bread, things that nourish us, things that feed us. What else feeds us? Watermelon. Watermelon. Absolutely. <laughs> that is a great answer. Anything else? Anybody else? You guys got, what feeds you? You got a favorite food? I used to like lasagna, and then I became allergic to tomatoes, so it's complicated. But I like it. Do you have a favorite food? Hamburgers. Hamburgers. All right. Bacon? Anybody like bacon? <laughs> yeah? Probably, anybody like bacon too much? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Beans? That's people like beans. All right. Who likes cake? Wow, there's a surprisingly small amount of hands going up for people who like cake. It's, all right. Someone really likes cake. That's awesome. Thanks, Richard. Hmm? You really like cake, too? Oh, excellent. You're going to like later if you're here, because there's going to be cake. You like candy, too? Oh, well, then the end of October must be a good time for you. Right? And around Easter? Yeah. So in communion, what we do is we talk about what brings us together. Food brings us together when we eat together, which is why we do communion together. And it also brings us together, we hope, with the divine, with God, with the great spirit. And so we use bread and juice to symbolize bringing together, to feed us spiritually and feed us physically. What do you, what do you think would be good communions for, for a rabbit? Carrots, excellent. Carrots? Yeah. yeah. And maybe some water? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stevie likes that. Carrots and water is great for him. And that brings him life, and it brings him together with God. Why is that? Why would carrots bring Stevie together with God? I know we all... It's orange. It's orange, and, it for, and that fits for today really well. But it's also, it's life, isn't it? Food is life. It brings us the very thing that life comes from God, right? And so connects us with that. Yeah. You don't die. So you don't die. Mm -hmm. and, and when it talks, when we talk about spiritual things, 
We, don't, we, want our, we want to nourish and feed our souls, our spirits. We want, we want to be alive in, in many ways. So there's physically alive, but then there's also spiritually alive, right? Um, if you're a superhero, you have spirit. Sorry? If you're a superhero, you have spirit. If you're a superhero, you have spirit? Yeah, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. And, and you know what? Sometimes being a superhero means living out your spirit, doesn't it? And you can be a superhero to others by helping can't you? Isn't that what superheroes do? They help. And that's what God asks us to do. And that's how, and so we feed that in ourselves and one another. Yeah. Great. Well, I know that you've got a great children's program going on this morning. And indoor and outdoor? Indoor and outdoor. And I think the one, the kids that are indoor can also still go outdoors at some point. Yeah. So, so just so you know, parents, if you mark indoor, it's, you're not locking your kids inside. <laughs> just so you know, they'll be outside too. So thank you so much. Do you, do you, uh, do you guys want to pray it out before you go? Do you have a little time to pray together? Is that okay? Amen. Well, we're going to say a prayer where we, we, we say words that help us to focus our relationship and speak to God. Is that okay with you if we try that together? Everybody? Is that okay with everybody? All right. Let's, let's pray together. And we can, we can leave our, our eyes open or closed, and we're going we're gonna to lift these words to God. Okay? Loving God, we thank you for those things that feed us, that feed our bodies and our minds and our spirits. Fun with friends, learning and growing, sharing in your spirit of life and love for all. Thank you for being with us this morning and for the blessing of the wisdom of these young ones and the other younger, youngish one, who share with us all of our wisdom, all of our lives, and all of our community. In the love of your son, our brother Jesus, born to our sister Mary, and inspired and nourished by your spirit, we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Paw Patrol, for showing up. That was very nice of you to bring them. Have fun. So Amy's going to take you to, uh, to Spirit Quest. And if there's, are there parents that are going to come help out too? Or is that how that works? Not, okay, I'm still learning. Okay, bye, everybody. Have fun. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our reading this morning is from the New Testament, the book of Luke, chapter 17, uh, verses 4 to 10. And please join in the response indicated on the screen. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down and eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, and get yourself ready, and wait on me until I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Herein lies the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mark. I, 
I invite you to pray with me as we reflect together on this once more most difficult of passages to preach on. Let us pray. God of love and relationship, of healing and community, be with us today in the hearing of words that inspire us into actions that awaken your dream for the world. Loving God, our rock, our redeemer, our reconciler, and our sustainer. Amen. A verb, not a noun. What does this reading today have to do with World Communion Sunday or Truth and Reconciliation? When taken out of its literary context within Luke, and usually we start on verse 5, not verse 4, the disciples start out by asking for more faith, increase our faith. And they end up being told that a little goes a long way and that hard work is its own reward if you take it out of context. Taken in context, however, this passage has everything to do with communion, with togetherness, with relationship, with reconciliation and healing. In communion, we express and celebrate our desire, our desire for and the real possibility of reconciliation with God and with one another, and our interconnectedness with one another through the divine. So we seek together to be in right relationship. So this World Communion Sunday, with the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation having been just this Friday, expressing our desire for reconciliation with indigenous peoples and our desire to seek forgiveness and healing together is most appropriate. In calling us to live faithfully, Jesus has encouraged and challenged us to accept that faith isn't simply a state of intellectual or emotional peace or well-being. It's not a name for something that we can possess, but rather a name for an action, something we can do. Do faith, a path of living, of living out our faith, that faith is a verb and not a noun. It is a response, not a status symbol. It is not about which person, nation, or religion has it right, but rather how we are in right relationship with God and therefore with one another. Now we could argue that this is harder. It's a harder journey, isn't it? an active one rather than a passive one. And how do we live out our faith? Now, Jesus gives some examples right before this passage, and he ends with forgiveness, which we heard about. He talks about avoiding the exploitation of others, about being respectful and loving towards God's children. Children literally are to be loved. Jesus himself lived and stood with the oppressed, the poor, and those disadvantaged by the systems and structures of his time. He challenged authorities who claimed to be right rather than living to be in right relationship with others. In the ancient scriptures of Israel, to put a stumbling stool before the blind was a metaphor for being cruel and, and abusive to others. Either abuse or misguidance of those who are on journeys of faith, or literally abuse towards children, grieves God. The withholding of forgiveness or actions of exploitation and abuse to be hurtful separates people from their relationship with the divine as well as from one another. Living faithfully and lovingly are acts that lift up that connection, that heal wounds, and are lifted up in this passage. Indeed, not an easy path. Now, the church has had a hard time with this in the past. We have, in past, fallen into the mistaken impression that faith is a noun, a label that makes one right and another wrong. The disciples, in this passage, 
taking on the roles of those of us who struggle to understand, those who think that faith is something to possess in varying amounts, ask for more. And we can mistakenly believe that if we hold more faith than others, that somehow we're better than them. And this is a mistake we hear. And we have committed that mistake in the history of the Church Universal, as well as the United Church of Canada, thinking that we're right or better than others, that we've got the only path of faith. And so exploitation, abuse, and unrepentant unforgiveness has arisen, sitting as judge, jury, and executioners of punishment against others for the great sin of having a different faith or for being different. And so this passage is asking us to examine our lives of faith and ask ourselves, in whom we claim to believe? What do we have faith in? And how else can we live it, hold to it rather than holding it? How can we express that faith? If we sit about thinking or feeling better than others, Aren't we just being self-righteous? If it's not about loving God, but rather about loving ourselves. If we go about hurting others for being different in their faith expressions, their culture, their gender or sexuality, aren't we doing the same thing? And yet the good news is, Jesus came to help us be in right relationship with God and with one another. So often in our communion services, Jesus is, is equated with the sacrificial lamb of old, the temple whose blood was shed. For blood is life. And God being the source of life, it belongs to God. And so it was returned to God. That action was not to cleanse the sin or souls of those making the sacrifice. It was not atonement. No. It wasn't that easy. The returning of life to God was about reconciliation, was about a return to relationship. I return you this life so that our lives may be intertwined. That relationship then needed to be lived out and worked out and expressed authentically. Now, Jesus was a descendant and practitioner of this Israelite faith, as a first century Palestinian Jew, he knew these things. He knew that so much of his ministry, of his mission, was to return us to relationship with God, with one another, with the world, and with ourselves. And that is our good news, that it is still possible. It's not a one and done. You haven't broken with God because you've messed up and you can't come back to it. You haven't broken with humanity because of hurts and pains from the past. Healing is always a possibility. So if relationship with God is the emphasis, that one is expressed through faithful actions, a qualitative rather than quantitative an active rather than passive relationship, where in praxis, not polity, is the greatest part. How do we live that out? Well, we've already tried in the church being the ones who force others to be like us. We've caused pain and oft continue to do so in society and in churches. And that hasn't worked, has it? That's not brought us together. It's brought us apart. But we've also continued to listen. Listen to the living word. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. With Christ alive in the world and the Spirit working in us and others, we acknowledge that that relationship is everywhere and still possible. And we have heard a call to healing, to a unity that celebrates and embraces diversity. So we embrace ecumenism, dialogue and relationship within the universal church. We embrace interfaith dialogue and exchange, 
not to convince one another, but rather to share and appreciate what we can offer one another of understanding. We work to heal pain inflicted upon others as well as ourselves, and we try to do so as we seek understanding of the Great Spirit whose nature is love, living inclusion of all. All are wanted, all are needed, all are welcome here. And so we struggle, and it can often be a real struggle, to forgive ourselves as well as others, to live out respect and love for all those in our lives as well as for creation, learning to better care for the planet, our only home and life support. We call for justice. We give generously as we are able to the work of the church. And even as we are challenged in the hard times, we come together to support, to teach, and to learn together. And we celebrate the life of faith that we live each day together, called to embrace gratitude for this life so we may continue to seek to forgive and to be forgiven, to love and allow ourselves to be loved, grounded and rooted in faithful action, anchored in God, grounded in love, inspired by Jesus and empowered by the Spirit, so thankfully and so thankful for what we gain in community, in believing, in relationship with each other and with the source of love in the universe. So inspired are we to do faith as a verb, not a noun. Let us go forth from this time to all times and do faith together. Thanks be to God. Amen. All that we are and all that we have comes from God. We lift our time, our talents, and our resources as we, dedicated, as we dedicate them to one another. Let us join in our prayer of dedication that lifts up our commitment to live faith. Let us pray. Multiply our efforts by your grace, God of love, so that the needs of a hurting and lonely planet may be met with all will, then, and all will know that they are cared for. Each creature, each ocean, the sky and the land, and people everywhere will know that they are valued and a beloved part of your creation. Strengthen us as we give and receive within your community of love and mutual support. Amen. And let us lift up all that we offer and reflect on this offering in our musical offering.
called as we are by a loving God who seeks relationship with us. Let us express that relationship and our seeking together in our act of spiritual communion. God be with you. you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered throughout the world and throughout time, at every table where your blessed bread of life and cup of hope are offered, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Be with us in these symbols in our hearts. As we one, as we one, as we are one who call, let me start that sentence over again. Be with us in these symbols and be with us in in our hearts as one who calls us to continue in life together. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we are not at this time receiving the elements physically, in the presence of these symbols of our communion, with the divine and with one another, we pray that you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your gracious kingdom and unending peace. We continue to pray in our prayers of joy and concern. Powerful Christ, we are grateful that you came to us as a child who grew out of a community that nurtured, supported, and taught you the way of your ancestors. You have asked us to do the same, to treat every child as we would treat you, to love every person as you have loved us. We are grateful that your power is rooted in love, not force. Your strength is displayed through community, not might. You have taught us to work toward a better world where all of creation thrives and where every child matters. On Orange Shirt Day, we remember Phyllis Webstad as a child and the stolen childhood of all the children forcibly raised by church-run institutions known as residential schools. We, 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 We lament how these institutions stole from children the opportunity to grow in a safe and loving environment stole from elders the opportunity to share their teachings and wisdom with younger generations, and stole from communities the opportunity to live intergenerationally. We mourn the children who never made it home, the communities that were destroyed, the broken hearts, the stories never shared, and the shattered relationships. We ask, that you provide comfort to all who are seeking healing and who daily wrestle with the ongoing harmful legacy of these colonial institutions. Strength to all who name how colonial powers have harmed us as peoples and as a nation, often at great personal cost, and courage to all who are working toward reconciliation. Christ child, As you grew, you reminded us to always welcome and care for children. We remember your children today. We we lament and acknowledge the sinful ways of colonial powers tried to eradicate indigenous cultures within Canada, breaking indigenous families, removing children from their homes while destroying communities. And we pray for healing so that we who live together in this country can also work together to build a better future where all children are cherished, beloved, and given what they need to thrive so that we may treat all children as we would treat you, our beloved. May it be so. We 
pray all of these things, sharing the words that Jesus gave to all of his disciples, including us, as we continue to pray the Jesus prayer for today. O oh, source of life, connectedness beyond simple perception, we hold our experience of you as sacred. May we choose to live the good you call for in our actions as well as in our imaginings. Nourish our bodies and spirits, inspiring us to share the abundance that we have. Challenge us to show understanding and love for others as we need to be understood and loved. Help us overcome our shortcomings to be our best selves through the faith that you have always shown in us. May we all make it so. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength this World Communion Sunday and every day. Be our wisdom and guide, and guide us in right pathways, conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious love, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with God and the Holy Spirit live and reign one great spirit in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. With these symbols to, reminded us, to remind us of our connectedness, let us continue in our worship as we lift our souls and lift our voices in the singing of Voices United, number 481, sent forth by God's blessing. Blessed by air and water, earth and wind, soil below you, sky above you, Christ before you, Christ behind you, and love entwining you all round. Go now in peace. Allez dans le Père Seigneur, via con Dios, scanning Goa, peg pa lion, cayo neng Dios. Shalom. Assalam alaikum. Amen. It's a song of praise to the Maker. The thrush sings high in the tree. It's 
Spirit, you and I can join. 